Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe and welcome back on the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Match day 5 in the World Cup and what a match day because it's probably the one that a lot of Juventini around the world were waiting for. Today it's Juve versus Juve. 3 versus 2, 3 from the Golden Green Brazil team that will play versus Serbia. We are speaking about Danilo, about Bremer and Alexandro with two that will probably start Danilo and Alexander with Bremer on the bench. On the other side, one will start and it is Vlahovic because there is already some controversy with Kostic, with the coach Stojkovic that is always speaking quite well about Juventus. This time controversy is saying that uh, Kostic is not 100% and why? Because of Juventus and Allegri that went 100% on Kostic, pushing him to the limits and that is not ready today. Physical problems for him slightly and not a big one but slightly muscle problem for the Serbian number 17 for Juventus. Will he play or not? I don't know. I'm asking myself what should Juventus do thinking about the World Cup and uh, putting all of them in ice boxes? I don't know. What they did already with Vlaovic was already for me too much and you see it's not because you are paying attention to a player like Di Maria and uh, Paredes for Argentina that they will win you the game. So I don't know if really it's a controversy that we have to speak about too much or not. Who is your favorite one? Is it the big favorite for the World Cup, especially after Argentina losing versus Saudi Arabia? Or is it Brazil, the one that really is there because we already have five World Cups? Or is it the underdog? And we are not speaking about Saudi Arabia or Japan, but we are speaking about the underdog from before the competition. We are speaking about Serbia. I'm really curious to see what you think about that and what your comments are. We go immediately to Tutto Sport after you taking a moment to put a maximum of like to subscribe to the channel and I really want to thank you. Thank you because I know that at the moment club football for whatever club in the world is a bit less interesting but also the World Cup it's a bit dividing on a Juve channel so thank you for all of you that taking the time to watch the video and to put a like. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Tutto Sport. He's speaking about Juventus eyes of Juventus on two players from Serie A from the right side of the field or the backs or the wings we are speaking about Singo from Torino and Mal from Atalanta attenzione we go inside the papers where they are saying that Juventus wants to go for it it's not necessarily someone that will come in the winter but they are already thinking about also the summer it can be a player that if they have the opportunity to anticipate his arrival he will be there but Juventus is not thinking about two different players not one for the winter and one for the summer so or we anticipate and we have immediately for the winter which I believe is really super important because Quadrado alone in that 3-5-2 is really impossible that he can finish the season even if he's not participating at the World Cup and he's resting at the moment it will be a disaster so Juventus should anticipate the right side but going too much in a rush could be also counter effective. Can Singo or Male arrive already in January? There are slightly possibilities, especially for the one of Torino that is already living there, that has an extension until 2024 with Torino, but the possibilities are there. Why? Because the value is not that much and Juventus could go cash, as they did for Bremer a few months ago, because we know it, Bremer that was about to go to Inter, at the end Juventus, in a few hours, they went for him cash on the table and Cairo he said you know what here Bremer is for you that's the beautiful gift what about the other players that are from Juventus that are extending well apparently Ealing will extend without any problem until 2026 and then we will go immediately to buy 7 million Milik 7 million on top of the one that we already paid uh, nearly not even 1 million so it will be a total 8 million euro for the Polish player that I believe is really really great to have him in our team not as a starter but he can play as a starter and also as a rotation player who are the other ones that Juventus are also looking for because it's not only Male and uh, uh, Singo but there are also Hulm from Spezia young revelation new talent that is upcoming Karsdorp we have Fresneda from Valladolid Dubois that is a bit older 28 and we have Correa from Valencia young player as well so will there be one of the names of that list that will join Juventus in the winter let's see hopefully at least for me not Karsdorp because Gazeta del Sport is speaking about him in a double page Karsdorp is close to Juventus or at least Juventus wants to go for Karsdorp 
but Roma doesn't want to give him for free. They don't want to give him on loan. They are in separated between the player and the Giallo Rossi, the club of Roma. They but they don't want to give a favor to Italy's ex-champions of uh, the Scudetto. We are speaking about Juventus, mamma mia. I wanted to say out of habit the champions of Italy because that's what I'm used to, but it's not true. The last two years we didn't win the Scudetto. Anyway, we go there because Roma, they don't want to. So will Juventus go for Karsdorp? I don't think so, even if Gazzetta is really pushing, pushing, pushing. The good news from La Continassa is that Locatelli will be the first one to start straining again. You know that the team will come back on the 6th of December. Well, Locatelli is anticipated everyone. He's going today already in La Continassa to start training. The second one that will follow is Chiesa. Not today, but in the coming days. I'm really happy to see that. Pogba is already training with a special trainer in Miami. And he will also anticipate the date of the 6th of December to be back in Torino to start thinking about Cremonese and the six games in January of Juventus. What about Gatti? Well, Allegri is believing in Gatti, even if the performance at the moment are not the ones of a phenomenon. Well, they don't want to give him on loan. Why? Because they want to work on him in the next six months of the season. Allegri wants to help Gatti to arrive in the second part of the season. And that's really beautiful because we love this beautiful story and we have to give him a chance. Chances that will probably not be given to Leonardo Bonucci that is going towards the end of his journey with Juventus with a lot of trophies with of course that really strange situation of him going to Milan for one year celebrating a goal versus Juve and coming back well Juventus is now open to listen for offers for Bonucci I don't believe there will be a lot of offers especially not at the salary that he's earning today but anyway any offer that will arrive Juventus will listen to it they will consider it and they will propose it to Leonardo Bonucci will he go or not we don't know what about Rabiot will he go or not the same question for the Frenchman well yesterday he spoke uh, Rabiot to La Repubblica and he said that the contract extension with Juventus he doesn't know at the moment he wants to focus on the World Cup it's not the time to talk about it today but the performance that he's offering of course will help him to go or elsewhere or to renew with Juventus looking at the salary that he's asking or the mother agent is asking I believe and we spoke about it yesterday during the live that it will be impossible impossible is nothing for Manchester City because they are giving a lot of money the money that Rabio is asking are peanuts against the one that Pep Guardiola will win because they will offer him an extension until 2025 I believe he already signed so forget about the forget about Pep Guardiola to Juventus for the last ones that were still hoping for it or at least not until 2026 what about United well, I told you yesterday, if you had a bit of a moment, it was the moment to give your offer to United. They set a price between the 7 and 9 billion. <laughs> It's your chance. It's the moment. Don't wait too long. Don't wait too long if you want to buy it. What about uh, our friend Tarek 1897? He was reporting the words of Hervé Renard, the coach of Saudi Arabia, that uh, were, was receiving the question, what is your favorite team in Italy? And that was something that made me really, really proud because he said Juventus. Of course, Juventus. I grew up watching Platini, Deschamps and Zidane. Every Frenchman carries a beast of Juventus inside of him. I'm Italian. I don't like necessarily the French team as a rivalry, but on the other hand, France, La France, they have so many representatives of Juventus that there is always a part of me that like them. Didier Deschamps, the coach, Rabiot, but also we are thinking about Zinedine Zidane, Deschamps, and so on and so on. It is just fantastic. Speaking about Deschamps, I told you that there was a reunion with Moji, Marcello Lippi, and a lot of 96, 97, 95 players. We are speaking about Conte, Torricelli, Di Livio, and so on. Well, Deschamps was not there, but he sent them a message, or at least they did a FaceTime call, and he was really emotional. He wanted to be there as Del Piero from Doha that sent a video message because he wanted to be there. Antonio Conte did everything to be there. They were not in Torino, as I said yesterday, so I'm really sorry. They were in Viareggio, really near to Firenze where the coach Marcello Lippi is living. It was quite funny for them. They spoke about everything and nothing, the never-ending Juve. Also with a lot of jokes of Delivio. At a certain moment, just a joke, if you are still there on the video, uh, there was Moji that was leaving to the bathroom. Delivio, Angelo Delivio, he took the silver forks that were on the table and he put them in the pockets of Moji, in the jacket, uh, the pocket of the jacket of Moji. When Moji, he was nearly at home, he discovered that there were some 
forks in his pockets and now he's obliged to give them back to Marcello Lippi. This kind of thing happened yesterday in that meeting. Fantastic, beautiful stories. Today, Juventus women will play versus Arsenal and I will be able to do a watch along a Twitch channel if you're looking for me. That will be an epic game because if Juventus win, they go at seven points, leaving Arsenal behind at six in the third game of the Women Champions League. Never sing Banzai. My dear Banzai is the title of... Corriere dello Sport, you are speaking about yesterday, the epic victory of Japan, Gazzetta dello Sport, exactly the same, crazy World Cup, because we see everything and nothing in that World Cup, yesterday Japan was able to go with that remontada, losing 1-0 and winning over Germany, one of the solid winners of the World Cup, as always, the ones that are always favorite, well, Japan did an epic one, fantastic, fantastic, and we are thinking, at least me, you know, that I'm a big, 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 anime fan you know that i'm following since the first episode i'm following also blue lock well blue lock was trendy yesterday if people are asking what is manga what is blue lock what is anime well look on, look on internet because i'm not sure if i will have the time to edit that video but the kits of japan were designed also by the one that is designing the anime blue lock and it was trendy yesterday after the game the designer was immediately drawing a first draft beautiful images also super happy Kane relief this was actually the words of uh, sport mirror that were speaking about Kane that was maybe a doubt for the next coming games he's feeling well so he will play that big game England USA but they were also saying that the win of Japan yesterday was the biggest shock of the World Cup since the day before since Saudi Arabia versus Argentina we finish with the last World Cup news with Marca that is speaking about Un España brutal uh, brutal Spain because they killed yesterday Costa Rica with a fantastic 7-0 ole ole from sport because this is what happened yesterday 100th appearance with Costa Rica for Keylor Navas that yesterday he was really living a nightmare a nightmare where he was awake and was able to see seven times the balls into the net a disaster lot of young players also for Spain, so we will continue to hear for Spain from the coming years. Gana de ganar. Gana de ganar. What does that mean? The will. The will to win. Gana with the playing words. I believe that every single paper, every single country is playing with these words. The team Ghana, that's the opponent of Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal today. Well, Portugal has the will to win. There are four games today, starting with Switzerland, Cameroon, with the Cameroon players that were saying, our offensive line, our offensive three, Chupomoting, Ubabacar and Mbomo, they have absolutely nothing to shy about versus the Brazil front three. Attenzione, don't exaggerate. Anyway, Switzerland, Cameroon, then Uruguay versus uh, uh, South Korea, Portugal, Ghana, that I will try to do here live on the channel, and then Brazil versus Serbia to close the day. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that video without any edit. It was speaking, 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 but at least you have all the facts. And now we go back to enjoy the football game that we will see on the television. Grazie, forza. Juppe.